Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone to class this morning. Thank you, Jafina, John Paul, Lubega, Zelatoli, and Aradna for joining class. Uh, we'll begin. Uh, can I ask uh, John Paul to lead us in prayer, please? Yes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this morning as we come before you. We pray, O oh God, that you would teach us and let your Holy Spirit minister to us. Let this time be a, a learning for all of us, O oh God, that we would prepare ourselves to see your kingdom come in a very powerful way. We thank you for Pastor Selena. We thank you for uh, all of us who have joined this morning. We pray and ask for your grace to be with us this morning, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, so we were looking at uh, the developmental needs of uh, children in various age groups. We began by looking at the common developmental uh, needs for uh, children across all ages. And then we look specifically at uh, the physical, emotional, mental, um, social, and spiritual needs of children um, in ages three to four and five to seven, um, eight to nine. And um, last class we began, before we ended class, we began looking at uh, the developmental needs of children uh, ages 10 to 12. So basically, uh, children who are um, ages 10 to 12 are in grade five to uh, seven, okay? So how many of you work with uh, teens and preteens? are working presently, have worked with uh, preteens or teenagers before, or presently working with them? Okay, Jafina, anyone else? Okay, Lubega as well, thank you. Any of you in class have children who are preteens or teens? Anyone? Oh, Lubega, okay, nice. Okay, so um, what do you think are uh, the characteristic, uh, you know, or the characteristics of uh, children uh, ages 10 to 12, preteens? We've all been preteens. <laughs> so, what are the basic characteristics of uh, preteens? Even if you don't uh, have children for preteens, or even if you are not have not worked with them or working with them, what are the basic characteristics? We've all been through a preteen and teenage stage, so we should know. Yes, Jeffina. Um, I think it's a it's a stage where you search for your identity, mostly during the teenage. I I kind of feel like that, like what you want to do and what you're doing and i think it's a stage where you also take some decisions uh, by yourself you don't depend on your parents much once you become teen i remember when i turned 13 all my brothers and they were all surrounding me and they said hey you turned 13 now <laughs> and uh, i kind of felt like oh we've grown up suddenly all of a sudden and i think it's the stage uh, you also want to be mature. You get much more maturity about life, maybe, and uh, also a stage where I accepted place was in my teens. So I think a stage of confusion, even like a lot of questions: what life is, what we are doing, what's happening, why we are living. All these questions I had when I was a teen. Before that, I never had. Before that, I just go to school, I come back, life was nice. And then once you become teen, you have a lot of questions like, who's the real God? Why there are so many religions for what we are living all these questions pop up and yeah so i think that's how it is. yes i think you you said shed so much about the characteristics of the preteens and teenagers uh, good uh, it's quite fresh in your mind i think yes divya says friendships are very important yes they're trying to find their place in the world yes very true <coughs> Anything else? According to me, they are very, very inquisitive. They would like to know a lot of things. Uh, they are also good at shopping. They want to shop almost the, all things in the supermarket. 
They also, <laughs> they, they don't go to church to learn the word of God. They only go there basically for fun, to, to, sh to show off anything that bought them, the new stuff, the clothes and the like. They also like visiting but not to stay there. They feel safe, according to mine, because mine, they're all girls. They feel safe when they are home with mom and daddy, but they also want to go out. They want to go, like you take them to the beach, but when you are there, like like looking after them, they, all, they want to shop a lot of things. One of my smallest speaks that the whole man in the entire world belongs to daddy and he keeps it in the bank. So when he says, <laughs> has no money he says why don't you go to the bank and you bring that money <laughs> so that's how they are <laughs> i think you're having fun with your girls lubega <laughs> they're typical girls they love to shop <clears throat> sorry love to buy uh, nice okay uh yeah like you said it's an uh, you said it's an age where um, they're very confused. I think you, uh, Jeffina said, but I think um, Lubega also said something, just slipped my mind. Anyways, um, and I think it's a stage of bombarded emotions and we seek independence during the stage. Yes, the stage is when they want a lot of independence, freedom to think, to, to do, to express, to dress, um, uh, you know, to do what they basically like. And yes, emotions are on a roller coaster because of the the hormonal changes that are happening. Yes, anything else? Anyone else likes to add? They love to ask questions. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, basically, I think questions about, um, I mean, if you're more friendly with, what kind of questions? Let me ask you, Abhi Breaker. What kind of questions would I go on to qualify it? Different question okay. mark, Monique. Different okay. question mark. They, okay. they so basically, like to learn, they want to like, they like to reveal new things. Okay. Like Thank I have you. my all my daughter here. Is a between ten to eleven, and you always ask questions about life. Daddy, what about this? Daddy, what about that? Uh, I had my friends saying this. Uh, uh, what is the meaning of this? So they used to, at this they used to, she used to disturb me always, every time with different different questions. So with, about life, about even about uh, about the uh, universe. Uh, uh, why why sun uh, normally come out from the east? Why is it go down from the uh, so the different different questions? So it used to bombard me with different different questions. So, <laughs> questions and between ten. And yeah, I think you are beginning to feel like Google <laughs> with all your children asking you a lot of questions. Yes. Uh, like Lubega said, you know, they're very curious. Yes, they're very curious to know about a lot of things because they're beginning to think more logically and that's why they are asking more questions. And their questions can be never ending. But their questions can also be like, you know, uh, if you tell them not to do something, they'll ask you, why shouldn't we do it? Why can't I do it? Why can't I go there? Why can't I wear this? Yeah. Jeffina says, I think when it comes to questions, we also love to figure out the answers by ourselves than just relying on someone's perspective. Yes. Yeah. Basically, they um, they like to be like to challenge others with their own thinking, their own understanding, and that's why they ask a lot of questions. But also they're very curious to know things, to know about the world and what's happening, because they're learning fast and uh, they're learning to be independent, so they want more information. And if they're not very close to their fr their parents and their parents kind of put them off and don't discuss things with them and their teachers are also annoying and not very friendly and not approachable uh, in terms of discussing, hearing them out, uh, they will look for answers in Google or uh, with friends, basically with friends and that's when they are led astray to all uh, wrong kind of philosophies and ideologies and um, 
thought patterns and systems that are not really um, right. Yes. Anything else anyone else likes to add? Yes, Divya. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, just uh, in terms of the question part, I was also thinking uh, about the curriculum that we have here. So it is uh, basically built on uh, these three uh, pillars, knowledge, uh, understanding, wisdom. So uh, it's kind of, uh, I think the elementary age, uh, they teach the what the what of things like they have to memorize a lot of things during the elementary age then they go into the you know the middle school where they have to understand like the why why is it like that uh, so that is the understanding part and then uh, when they go to the higher grades uh, they uh, 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 they teach them uh, the how, like how to apply what they have learned from their, you know, elementary ages. So it's a biblical, uh, like a uh, Christian curriculum, but it's built on uh, these three pillars, like knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So I think they are trying to cater when when you are saying these things and trying to relate, like uh, maybe they are trying to cater to the needs, you know, of those age groups. Uh, even we know how in the Bible it goes with Proverbs, yeah, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. So the what, how, and why, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, this age, they are more like, uh, you know, are they, uh, 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 you know, bringing to think logically and reason out things, and that's why they are more practicals and all, you know, they begin even theories for this age group, uh, grade five. Uh, to seven, they, the preteens, and then of course uh, beyond that, uh, um, uh, eight to the, uh, ten, uh, uh, the grades eight to ten, they begin to do theories, proofs, you know, uh, uh, trying to do various practical uh, uh, experiments uh, which they can learn. So they're trying to reason out things, not just like when they are in the elementary classes where they are in a, you know, in a very fantasy mindset where they're very they just accept everything you know you just give it to them they just if you tell them the grass is green because god made it they uh, they will accept it but in this age group you know they will think about photosynthesis and you know all of those things and um, all of those um, uh, uh, little little aspects you know just not that god made it green but it's green because of you know, they try to prove things and think to things uh, more logically and reason out and uh, prove things for themselves. Uh, yes. So uh, uh, children ages or preteens ages 10 to 12, uh, you know, they move from childhood to, uh, you know, to into the adult world. Um, some of them really want to be uh, adults. So they began, they begin behaving like adults even when they are in grade five uh, six seven nowadays we have children in grade uh, five six seven who are be behaving like adults so some of them clearly want to behave think act like adults you know some of them uh, still in the very playful child uh, childish mindset and they are forced to uh, get into this whole transition um, where they are trans transitioning from, you know, being children, being kids into being, um, you know, adults. Um, and it's a very difficult phase, a challenging phase. We all went through that. Um, it's quicker now than I think when I was in school, children are reaching um, puberty even more quicker and faster than, you know, when I was in school. And uh, for them, the world around them becomes very, very complex. Uh, it becomes more complex for them even as they're trying to understand like uh, Jeffina was saying their identity who they are you know where they are what is their purpose what they're doing here and things like that okay so what to expect in this age group uh, basically girls develop uh, physically faster than boys physically faster than boys boys of this age uh, can be very competitive and success can be very close to their heart they you know uh, uh, when we say this we're not saying you know everyone is like that but uh, we are saying most of them you know uh, 
can be very the boys can be very competitive and success can be very close to their hearts and if uh, and it's a matter of great concern for them if they're not being successful in be it in their studies or you know if they're learning a skill like a sport uh, like a, uh, playing an instrument or you know some skill or activity that they're involved in or some games and they're not um, you know f uh, they're not growing in that they're not um, furthering in that or they're not moving up you know uh, uh, they can be really concerned and worried and that can uh, you know trigger off mood swings and um, their reactions and they can be very negative and um, um, they can snap back very easily so this can be one of the reasons for the boys especially um, and at this phase you know the teens start um, developing uh, best friendships um, uh, and their friendships are more based on their uh, their likes, their dislikes, their uh, talents, um, what is their mindset, their thinking. So you can see, you know, um, even friendships can change during this age group uh, because if some of them are very studious, um, uh, they love studies, they can they can easily bond with other uh, uh, p students in the class who are prone to, you know, uh, studying and discussing things. But if they are the, the very playful kinds, they enjoy playing sports, so they find uh, friends in, in who share their common activity. If some of them are the parting kind, uh, you know, they love fashion, uh, they love dressing up and all of that. So they find their friends. So it can also be a concern because many of them who have been very friendly uh, from grade um, uh, or kindergarten to right up to grade five, you know, or grade six, and slowly they find their uh, best friend, you know, uh, no longer spending time with them, moving out to different um, groups, talking more with others than with, um, uh, you know, uh, their own their, their own best friend that they had during all of these uh, um, uh, school years, it can be very concerning and very worrying and uh, painful for those who are uh, feeling left out because their friend has is kind of finding others uh, uh, engaging in, in, in means of discussing and going around with them. So this can be a major issue and uh, it can also be an issue in the, uh, in the children's church and so you'll need to help um, uh, children understand hey you know it's not because you are bad or it's not because your friend is not able to relate to you uh, or doesn't like you it's just because they're uh, they're they're um, more focused on what they like and they're beginning to see their tastes their likes their dislikes their talents their skills and they're finding people um, who can share their activities, um, you know, and uh, so you can also find people who share your common activities so you can build up friendships and uh, bonds better. So this is something very concerning for uh, children, especially in this age group. Um, we also see that, you know, um, even though they get very friendly and they're choosing their friend circles, their peer groups become very important, uh, their relationships are very complicated. So what do we mean when, you know, the relationships are complicated? Um, basically, they're moving from, uh, from a, a childhood stage to adolescent. And, uh, you know, their relationships tend to involve a wider range of uh, emotions and expectations and uh, friendships can become more complex as individuals start to understand and deal with various feelings, uh, conflict and shared um, experiences. Uh, they okay, also can be very competitive in nature. Their friendships can be competitive in nature, uh, particularly among girls because uh, uh, the, you know, their competitiveness might manifest in various ways, uh, such as, you know, when they're vying for attention, they're looking for recognition, um, uh, and they're looking for being included in their social, within their social circles. Uh, so uh, preteens may compare themselves to their peers, uh, leading to a more uh, competitive atmosphere in their relationship. So even though they're very friendly and they're looking for peers and their friend group circles are very important, these are some things that we need to keep in mind. Okay. Uh, it also, uh, you know, they, their friendships are very, uh, uh, the dynamics are very changeable, changeable dynamics their friendship has, you know, because they're all undergoing significant physical, uh, emotional and social changes. And these changes can influence the dynamics of their relationship, their friendships, 
may experience fluctuations, you know, as um, they, uh, these preteens explore different aspects of their identity, uh, which leads to shift in their preferences and interests and social connections and that is why their friendships uh, slowly change and they you know they move on from their best friends or their 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 uh, friend circles to forming different cliques to forming different uh, groups okay and this is especially among um, girls um, and research suggests that girls may experience unique social pressures uh, because they, uh, it's all related to their appearance their social status their peer relationships uh, during this developmental um, stage. And all this contributes to the complexities of their understanding of um, uh, their friendships and their uh, relationships. And then they begin to be more affected by, you know, the standard and the types of their friends. So whatever their friends say kind of becomes a standard, their norm, uh, what they want, would want to do, what they adhere to, compared to, you know, when we looked at um, uh, ages, uh, 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 you know, the previous ages, um, basically uh, between uh, nine to, uh, say, about... Um, uh, six, seven, eight, nine years old, when they are more, uh, you know, their, their models become, their teachers become their models. So they're just modeling their teacher. And and we discussed this in the last class, how, you know, uh, we can really invest in that age group because we are their models. Um, but when they come to preteens, suddenly, you know, their friends uh, become more important. What their friends say, do, um, uh, you know, uh, even talk about uh, uh, things in life, what they say about uh, them in particular, uh, all holds deep uh, significance and influences them very deeply. Uh, and, you know, what their parents say, what their teachers have said so far does not really matter, but what their friends say really um, matters. And we also said that they become uh, beginning to get very independent, um, they also develop a capacity to reason and work out things. And, um, you know, so this can be accompanied by some very uh, cheeky smart talk, uh, which they didn't have, you know, uh, when they were uh, 10 years old. I mean, uh, when they were, um, yeah, basically when they were six, seven, eight, nine years old, they didn't have this uh, uh, sense of cheeky talk in terms of, you know, uh, reasoning out things with you, wanting to have their way. So, uh, you know, uh, we can get a little intimidated and angry, but, uh, you know, we can also discuss with them in a very more fun, uh, smart way, uh, you know, catching their smartness and, um, uh, just discussing and talking with them can also be very interesting and they can be fun to be uh, with, okay? Um, the next one is that, you know, um, the goals for this age, what are the goals for this age? They um, learn more about their strengths and their gifts. They're learning to get along with others well, even as their emotions are on a roller coaster. There are a lot of physical changes, you know, mood swings, um, which they tend to snap back easily, uh, fight back because they're learning to be more independent. Uh, so they're learning to get along with their friends because their friends are very, very important for uh, them. Okay. They're also learning how to resolve conflicts, not only with their friends, but specifically with their parents yes with their parents because uh, they're moving on to independence and uh, the parents are struggling they are struggling um, so you know you need to help them uh, how to resolve conflicts how to handle their own emotions in a in a very mature in a very nice uh, healthy uh, way they're also learning uh, you know to they're also understanding uh, the differences. They're learning to accept their difference. Have straight hair, why they have baby curly hair, why they have big ears, not small ears, fat nose, you know, their skin color tone, their eyes, uh, the way they look. Um, some children can feel that the others in the class are growing faster than them, why they are not growing physically, you know. So, all of this can be a huge uh, uh, problem, uh, you know, specifically um, their looks can um, uh, be a major concern for them. So, you know, it's important important at this uh, ages uh, 10 uh, 
uh, ages 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, to do a lot of um, uh, teen sessions with them where you can talk about self-image, self-value, how to handle emotions, how to resolve conflicts, media, you know, uh, a relationship with their parents, how to handle conflicts. So all of these topics can be useful. And of course, you can uh, speak um, uh, uh, generally with uh, on these topics but also you know base it on biblical principles and use biblical narratives and uh, uh, you know show them from various scripture passages what God has spoken about them and how they can handle their emotions and stuff like that so teen sessions are very very important and we do have teen sessions um, for our uh, children's church in this age group where um, uh, apart from the normal uh, children's church curriculum, we we used to have additional uh, teen sessions uh, for them. Okay, because they're basically trying to understand how different they are and accept their differences, their strengths, their weaknesses. Just love and accept themselves for who they um, are. Now we began looking uh, uh, at a few points last week, and so we'll continue from that. We looked at all of these points. Uh, basically, we we stopped at how children in this age, uh, you know, enjoy competitive sports and uh, uh, team games. So they're very competitive. They love team games. They are very athletic. So you can use games and activities uh, that uh, you know are competitive in nature and also team games. Um, also, they you know um, you know encourage. Um, uh, group participation, uh, 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 sorry, encourage participation in group chores in the classroom, um, you know, like uh, getting them to clean up the area each week, like for, uh, for in our children's church, we used to request them to help up and pack up and, you know, stacking all the chairs and, uh, you know, uh, just kind of rolling up all the uh, power cords, uh, putting back some of the stuff in the storeroom because we don't meet in our own uh, 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 facility. We uh, we rent out uh, uh, other spaces, so uh, we have to do set up and pack up. So we ask children in this age group, you know, to help us. Um, and so they can you can give them uh, you know some responsibility teach them how they can uh, serve in church it's a good time to teach them to serve in church they need a little a push uh, because you know they're not very uh, enthusiastic like um, uh, children you know in uh, uh, in grades um, uh, three four um, uh, and five, you know, they are they're more enthusiastic. The juniors are more enthusiastic than the preteens. So uh, this group, you really have to motivate them. But if you can get a whole lot of them to do it, then, you know, it becomes like a culture. And because their other friends are doing it, they would also like to do it. You can also get them to, if you're serving snacks, you can get them to help in serving snacks, or do a PowerPoint presentation, or, you know, um, setting up the LCD projector, the laptop, and all of those things. Uh, just get them to take on responsibility, teach them responsibility um, uh, in church, how they can, uh, you know, help at church, teaching responsibility for self and others in the group also will really uh, help them. Okay. Uh, practice service to others. Um, you know, you can take them for uh, a short um, mission trips where they can, or evangelistic uh, trips where they can go to, you know, orphanages, um, a home for the elder, elderly, uh, those who are uh, uh, the, the home for the needy. Um, you know, take them, show them, let them uh, minister there, care for them, help out in some way in these um, uh, homes. Also, uh, you know, get them to mentor younger children, uh, encourage them. So when you're having group games for the entire children's church, you can have preteens and teens uh, uh, helping their younger ones. Uh, whether it's a Bible quiz or a game or an activity, uh, you can get them to... Um, you know, be in charge, uh, take responsibility. Uh, also get them to supervise younger children. Uh, for example, if you are, uh, you know, uh, going out in the open space so you can uh, get them to help in leading the, the kindergarten, the grade one, the grade two, to the place where you're having a common activity and all of those things and just overseeing the children there, helping them out uh, and things like that. Okay. Um, 
also get them to pray together and individually um, also get them to lead out in group prayer so you can have them pray for um, uh, you know various needs in children's church in the common gathering or you can get them to pray for the offering or uh, you know some child who's uh, celebrating their birthdays you can get them to do that okay um, also a good age uh, for them to memorize uh, a lot of scripture uh, so you can have bible quiz uh, you know get them to memorize long passages uh, psalm 1 psalm 23 the books of the bible you know uh, the fruit of the spirit the gifts of the spirit uh, what is love uh, you know, you can get them to memorize all of these scripture passages, uh, get them to also memorize some of their favorite verses in the Bible, a good age for uh, uh, getting them to uh, do this. Okay. Uh, the next one is, you know, it's important to teach them to treat others kindly, both in and out of class. Of course, uh, they treat their friend groups very, very well. Why do you think they treat their friend groups very well? Why do you think they treat their friend groups very well? Even if somebody in their friendship groups, uh, you know, disagrees with them, they might not literally snap back or fight back. In, in, in uh, they might say things in a in a very strong way, but you know, uh, yes. They need acceptance, yeah. If they're not accepted by their friends, thank you, Divya. They need acceptance. If they're not accepted by their friends, it can be a huge, um, you know, emotional turmoil for them, a concern for them, uh, because friends are very, very important. Uh, a friendship group, peer groups are very, very important for them. They, it gives them a sense of identity. So, you know, um, uh, so sometimes even if they sharply disagree and have a disagreement and argument, uh, that can, you know, really affect them to a great extent. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's important to teach them how to, um, you know, be kind to others, uh, talk about uh, a good uh, scripture passage to discuss with um, teens, uh, uh, preteens uh, or you you can use the scripture passage for your curriculum is first corinthians chapter 13 where it's talking about what is love love is patient love is kind does not envy does not boast um, so you can talk about uh, love you can also talk about jesus's commandment about loving one another you know um uh, also talk about how to resolve conflicts in a peaceful and a mature way uh, how Jesus did it, how uh, the early church did it. You know, uh, you can talk about various narratives in the Bible. So this is, when you're thinking about the curriculum, you can think about uh, these points and keep these points in mind. Also, uh, you know, talk about um, how to speak the truth in love. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Okay. Yes, it's important that you can you speak the truth, speak your mind, speak what you 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 feel, you understand, you think, your you know what you are uh, trying to understand. You know you can share it, you can speak it, you can discuss with people, uh, but you know how to do it in love. Also, uh, help them how to express their frustrations and, and their anger uh, using calm words, how to calm themselves down, how to, uh, you know, discuss uh, keeping others' perspective in mind, uh, you know, and also seeking a resolution. Also help them to, um, and, uh, you know, develop these spiritual disciplines of uh, praying, reading the word, you know, how to serve in church, evangelism, uh, you know, giving of their offerings, even if you want to help them to tithe, some of them get their pocket money, um, how to tithe so you can help them. Uh, and I think basically they would learn all of these things when you take them for mission trips, you know, uh, and show them. Uh, it has a huge impact. I remember when I was in Bible college, uh, you know, I was going through a very difficult phase in my life and um, um, they took us to Mukti Mission, you know, uh, and in Mukti Mission, um, 
um, this is a home in in very close to Pune, the city of Pune, um, a home for uh, 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 you know women who are uh, widowed, who are abused, uh, who are divorced, uh, uh, and uh, you know the girl child who's just uh, abandoned. Um, all of them are in this home, and specifically, what really impacted me the most was I went to this room where they had all these women who are blind. And, uh, you know, they were sitting and they were uh, weaving things, they were making baskets. Uh, and that really shook me and that really brought me out of, uh, I was going through a very difficult days in my life, I was thoroughly depressed, but that really impacted me so powerfully. So I think, uh, you know, um, uh, pre-teens and teens are, uh, you know, uh, not only just independent, but they're always thinking about themselves. You know, uh, and that is why they have the very curious. They're asking a lot of questions. Also, their looks and everything. Uh, so, if you divert their attention uh, to you know uh, uh, homes and children and you know people in need, um, you will teach them the the value. You will teach them the importance of valuing what they have. Um, uh, being, um, you know, uh, happy with what they have, content with what they have, and how they can give to others. So I think, uh, you know, even uh, when we have uh, uh, preteen and teenage ch children at home, you know, they're basically wanting to buy and buy and buy and shop and shop because they're having this competition with their friends basically among girls you know and they want to look the best they want to be the best the best dressed and want every they're vying for attention uh, so they want everyone looking at them and like lubega said they go only to church because you know um uh, it's not to worship god but because of friends and attention seeking so i think uh, taking them for uh, mission trips and evan uh, evangelistic outreach um uh, you know, outreaches can really help them and change their perspective of thinking and being very self-focused to being people-focused and how they can help and, um, you know, how they can give away things um, and how they can be content with what they um, have. Okay. Any questions so far? Anything anyone likes to add? Say. Nothing. Okay. Uh, there are no questions, queries. No one wants to say anything. We'll move on. Okay. Uh, children in uh, teens, uh, preteens in this age. Sorry, preteen in uh, pre teenagers. You know, um, uh, they're able to understand more abstract ideas compared to the previous age groups, you know, um, where they understand concepts more better uh, and which needs to be reiterated and, you know, uh, help them to understand in a more realistic way. Uh, these children are able to understand more abstract ideas. So you can begin to talk about the Trinity, uh, you know, um, all of the doctrines like redemption, atonement, sanctification, uh, the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. You can also talk about the prophecies, uh, covenants, um, also give them a broad uh, uh, view of the entire overview of the entire Bible uh, about the historical settings, you know, and um, how, uh, you know, the Messiah, uh, that was Jesus, who, you know, the incarnation of Jesus happened at a specific time in history, but how it was, uh, you know, uh, uh, prophesied or it was made known from the very beginning that is in Genesis itself, in the Garden of uh, Eden. So, you know, uh, when Adam and Eve sinned. So uh, how the Bible talks about Jesus from the very beginning. Also, they, you can teach them about the various books in the Bible um, and how and who wrote the various books, how it was written, why it was written. Um, so you can get into deeper uh, teachings of the Bible and basically you can teach them uh, some of the courses that you are studying in the Bible College as well. Also uh, provide them with, um, you know, um, uh, answers to deeper questions like who is Jesus, why did he come, you know, 
um, uh, why and how does God love me uh, compared to other people who are loving me based on my looks and my social status and what I have and how I perform in school and how I behave and how good I am, you know. Um, also, their purpose in life. You know why they are here because that's a big question for them you know why am i here what am i doing here in on this earth at this point of time why am i living what is the purpose for my life so something that you can um, uh, talk about uh, in your curriculum you can have these points uh, as well these topics as well uh, some of the spiritual messages they need to hear is uh, that, you know, the salvation uh, message, you can share the salvation message with them uh, in a deeper, uh, in a more uh, clearer way, a way that they can understand. Uh, they can also, you know, lead them to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And many of them would want to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior in this age group. Also, you know, talk about, um, you know, God's wonderful plan for their lives you know, and that God will never leave them nor forsake them. Um, and, you know, how they can trust God. That's very, very important. Okay. Um, they're looking at the world around and they're beginning to think, see that, you know, people around them are not perfect. Even their parents are not perfect. Their teachers are not perfect. You know, nobody's perfect in this world and who they can trust. You know, who they can trust with their feelings, their emotions, what they're going, what they're thinking. You know, um, some of them can uh, be thinking a lot of uh, unhealthy thoughts. You know, who I can share with, what am I what I'm going through physically, emotionally, mentally. Uh, so it's a good time to teach them to trust God, to put their trust in God and that they can share with God anything uh, they, they want because God is there and he's trustworthy and he's um, faithful. Okay. Also teach them about, um, you know, the nature of God, uh, that in a more detailed way, you know, that he's all powerful, all knowing, ever present. So he knows what they're going through. He knows what they're thinking. Um, he can work on their behalf. He can change things. He can help them, you know, identify themselves, love themselves, uh, accept themselves. Um, also how they can achieve and be successful. Remember boys in this age are looking a lot for being successful uh, and girls for more for acceptance and loving themselves and you know, accepting themselves and valuing themselves also for the boys. So you can talk about um, how God is all powerful and also always present, present everywhere with them, ready to help them. So uh, these are important um, uh, attributes of God that you can talk about in a much detail, in, in a much deeper uh, way. OK, and uh, that, you know, they get, they are loved by God no matter who they are, what they how they look, their social status, how they perform, you know, what is happening in their lives. God loves them very deeply and they can uh, they, they don't have to do anything to make God love them. Um, but also you can teach them that they are saved by um, grace um, and not by works. Uh, talk about how Jesus is the only way, the truth and life. Like Jeffina was saying, they're very confused about so many religions, so many philosophies, uh, so many so-called gods and goddesses. So who is the truth? Uh, talk about the exclusiveness about Jesus, that he, he is the way, the truth and the uh, life. Okay. And also you can, um, uh, you know, uh, begin to get them to... Um, share Jesus or God with others, which is a, which at this age can be a little difficult because they're very conscious, you know, if they talk about religion and God to their friends, whether their friends will like them, accept them, call them a holy Joe, make fun of them and things like that. But uh, you can teach them in creative ways how they can uh, share about Jesus. What just basically uh, you know, through and how Jesus um, uh, you know their friends in their in in their in their same challenges, so they can just share. You know how God helped them, and this will just uh, you know, be means when they with uh, others. Uh, what can we do as um, uh, teachers, children's church ministers, who minister to preteens? Okay, uh, be very conscious of the fact that they're going through physical changes, 
okay and don't comment on their uh, their looks or their clothing or their style or um, uh, in front of others of course if there is uh, you know a, a particular child that's not is not dressing in an appropriate way and it's kind of going to be very uneasy for the teacher and for the um, the other students you can you can you know um, speak to the child um, one on one just explain things and uh, you know help uh, try to understand why the child is dressing up in the way that he or she is dressing up and then discuss from there and hear their point of view share your point of view and just help them to dress in an appropriate way okay they are looking for independence so give them a certain degree of independence uh, uh, what do you think are the areas that we can give them independence any thoughts? What are the areas we can give them independence? But it, 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 uh, we're talking about in the in the children's church or Sunday school setup. Any thoughts? Um. I don't know if I'm saying the right thing though. <laughs> so when I go to the pre-teens, like when you go to, like I was in beginners as well, you can tell the child where they have to sit. You, if you want to come friend, you can tell. But when I go to the pre-teens, they, they have specific spots. They have their friends. They want to be around them. And I just make sure they can listen to the class from where they are. Sometimes they go way too far and I tell them to come little friend. But that's one of the area I think I give independence whenever I go. Like you can choose where they where they are comfortable, where they can sit. That's one of the things that immediately comes to me. Yes, very true. Thank you, Jeffina. I think that's uh, so important. They, uh, you can see one going sitting right at the back, uh, you know, and there are hardly five or six students and the other five are sitting in the front and there's one right at the back there. Okay. So maybe you can just allow them, what do you think? You can just allow them to sit down there. As far as they are paying attention to you, you can get them to sit because, you know, if not, they can get very irritated and frustrated and you can, they can feel that you're treating them like a child. They would want, not want to come back to your class. Okay. Any other areas? Talking about the independence areas, we can give them independence. Yes, Lubega. I think we can allow them to cognitively be independent in, in in using the Socrates method. They should ask you questions. You wouldn't back them off, say you over ask, you do this or that. You should allow them to ask questions. Of course, as a as their trainer or as their tutor, you can guide them, tell them that let's ask on this very topic so to avoid them going astray. But uh, we should allow them be independent as in asking questions. Thank you, Ma. Yes, thank you, Lubega. I think that's very important. Uh, get them to ask questions. Do, do preteens and teens ask a lot of questions in class? Lots, OK. So get sure, them sure, to. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so get them to ask uh, questions. Um, and when when they ask questions, you know, your response should be, yeah, I think that's a very important question. Thank you for um, asking it. I, uh, I, I know what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I can just feel what you're saying. Uh, it's so true, so right. Uh, you know, what do the others think? So even if it's a kind of a very silly question, for you it can be silly, everyone else is laughing, but you can say, hey, that's such an important question, thank you for asking it, you know, um, so what do, you, what do the others think? Uh, so that way, I think it can be very encouraging for preteens and teens, you know, your response and the way you look at their questions and how you encourage them uh, and how you respond to their questions, very, very important, yes. Um, any other area where we can give them independence? Okay, I think uh, you can think of that during the break and uh, we'll meet after the break. Okay, thank you everyone.